let's let's pray father we are thankful unto you for tonight for your gift of life for your holy spirit for what we are going to discuss we commit ourselves into your hands let your spirit and let your presence tabernacle over us stay with us help us grant us wisdom grant us insight grant us knowledge and understanding and help our weaknesses and let your perfect will be fulfilled in our lives in jesus name amen all right it, it will be good for this to be a more relaxed time right like brother a senior brother senior sister a younger brother and sister kind of affair is that not so yes it will be good to have that otherwise um i'm not sure you would benefit so much so i would want you to feel free we would also feel free and we would give the holy spirit much room and much liberty to also feel free in our midst and i trust that we will make very very good use of the time that we have available all right when when um this um program was brought to my attention i i asked a number of questions to serum i believe it's online yes uh, and i asked him that are we addressing people who are entering into relationships are we addressing people who people who have found people who have identified um suitable mates and have done all the necessary things that needs to be done and you've had a yes and you are waiting for the time that you have set to marry or we have people who are in a relationship and you are also awaiting marriage pending marriage or we have people who um don't even know whether it's the right time people who don't know whether whether, whether it's the right time and i believe probably we have a mixture of people here right hello okay so where where do we start from do we just journey through we should just journey through yes yes so so let's say you've not found and you've not been found and you are roaming around in the system praying or you found but <laughs> wait to oh, wait oh. you you you've desired you are desiring but you haven't found because if if you find then you can say that this one is is the one that uh, we are both believing god to marry and some have seen and they are not just connecting you know um the the the, the brothers the brothers and also the sisters i mean someone could say oh, i'm going to marry by faith and as for me oh, i have faith and i've seen the lady and she's mine and i'm claiming her in the realm of the spirit and i'm praying and i'm i'm you know so you may be doing all the other things but you haven't opened your mouth you, you've not even related with the lady you don't even know where she stays you don't even know whether it's weak that you've been seeing all this while you don't know whether it's pawns, pawns you've been seeing, the smiles you've been seeing, whether the teeth are real teeth or there are some artificial things hiding there. You don't really know because you you may not have gotten close enough, right? But if Bible says that in heaven there is not going to be marriage, eh? There's not going to be marriage in heaven. Do you know that? The 
there's not going to be marriage in heaven. It is on this earth that you have marriage. It's an earthly institution. It's recognized above, but it is, administ- it is administered on this earth. The moment you appear in heaven, there's nothing like this is my wife, this is my husband anymore. Right, so it, it calls for much more reflection that that if I have to find someone or, or if I have to be found and we need mutual companionship on this earth whilst we are alive, then there, there has to be rules guarding that. Amen. And God is also important in, in your marital life. But he is not much more important in, in that con- beyond your salvation. Do you understand me? Yes, he needs you to be in heaven. And that is so much important to him. He needs you to fulfill your purpose on this earth. It is so much important to him. Right? And in addition to that, he gives you a help meet. If you're a man, and if you're a woman, in addition to that, he also gives you a man that would also allow you to fulfill what is committed to you. And yet, at the same time, you are being a suitable help to that man. You understand? So that is why God will create Adam. And Adam is there, he's doing very well, and God will come back and say, it's not good for man to be alone. And so he would come and create Eve and then commit Eve to Adam. And on this earth, there is companionship. On this earth, there is companionship. But beyond this earth, you stand before God as an individual. Amen. So despite everything that we discuss here, do not be brought to the place where you stand before God one day and it will be that the woman that I married... Did not, did not allow me to fulfill my calling. Or the man that I married did not allow me to fulfill my calling. It, 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 it wouldn't be a good excuse to present before God. Amen. Alright, so I believe we, we have some kind of foundation right now. So now let's look at a situation where you are not dating, you've not been found, and you haven't also also found. Like um, you just <clears throat> you finish SS, you went to tertiary, and you are serving God. You are in the house of God and all that. So one will ask that. Okay, so at what point do I say I really want to date? How will I know that I'm ready to date? Is it a valid question? Hello, are there people who, who are there? Give me a wave. If you are not there, we'll just keep and move on. No, you are, you are asking that at what point would I really have to start dating? And that's the question baggling your mind. You are not sure whether you should be dating or you shouldn't be dating. Is there anyone? Just give me a wave. When should I be dating? Okay, then we'll move on. We'll move on. All right. Okay, okay. There is also, there are some few hands. Okay, should I be dating or I shouldn't be dating and all that? Now, um, dating is not a fanfare. It's, it's not a fanfare. You don't enter into a relationship where you have proposed to a lady or you, the lady you have been proposed to, and you are, you, you, you are saying yes. And so for 
which reason we should start dating. Okay? Hello? It's, it's, it's not a fanfare. Why am I saying that? Because you are preparing yourself to embrace responsibilities. You are preparing yourself to embrace responsibilities. That's what it means by we want to start dating. Because it, it wouldn't be good to date for five years and beyond. Advice is per advice. The question is, what will you be doing? What would you be doing? And within these five years, we do not have met anyone. I know it's 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 generating other questions, and some of which we have on our table. Hello, do you understand me? Yes, what would you be doing? Like, you know you are not going to marry within the next five years or within the next six years. You are so certain that you are not going to start buying suitcase. You are not going to start buying saucepan. You are not going to start even getting a room for yourself. You are not going to start buying a bed. You are so certain that per the lifestyle that you are living, you are really not going to do that. You are so certain. Right? Then you, you don't really have a business going to propose to someone's daughter. Because you would now put her on hold and she would commit her life to you and any other person that would come around would not be open or accessible to her life. And if by, by the six year or the seven year time you would have disappointed her it would be a very very big disappointment in the life of this individual alright sister Angie ok so I think you started by saying that um, at what time you know should somebody start dating ok alright what from um, this is my view I think when when you are of age ok I mean when you are of age that's what I think ok alright ok moving on from there when are you of age oh when you are when you are of age whereby you can stand, stand at the altar and say I do most probably Okay, when you're of age, like let's say eight from like eighteen and above, okay, that, that's when I think you can start dating. Yeah, when you use age as a reference point, it sets a whole um, um, discussion. The reason is that if by eighteen you feel you are of age, by eighteen you feel you are of age, right, and you are writing remedials, SSCE remedials, right. You certainly know that when you finish your SSC remedial, you are not going to sell Indomie. If your path is you will sell Indomie and settle down in life, then you are just writing the remedial. Then this is somebody who is thinking in a certain way. Right? But you know that you are, you are, you are going to write remedials. You are 18 years. And when you finish, you want to become what? A nurse. And probably after that, you are going to spend a period of time in the nursing school. And after that, you have to now start practicing. Okay, but then it's not, it's not every, it's not, it's not every, it's not every, everyone, you know, everybody's situation is, is, is different. There are some people yes. who don't have any, not necessarily aspirations or whatever, but theirs is that maybe they want, they're in the market selling. I'm 18 Good. years old. So we don't set definite rules. I'm, I'm not giving you definite rules. I'm just saying that you need to envisage your plan for your life. And it must be clear that I intend marrying within four years. I intend marrying within three years. I intend marrying or this is, 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 these are the processes for my life. But someone who is not very clear, like I said, someone writing remedials at the age of 18 
and you ask him what he wants to become in life, he says he wants to be a nurse. But he's writing remedial. He hasn't seen his results. Right? He, he definitely has a long road to go. So when he comes to propose, and you are saying he's of age, he's 18, so you are saying yes, it will not be for your benefit. Right? It's not a straight rule, but I'm just saying that you need to assess. And these are the things that defines maturity and readiness not necessarily the age if, if the age is there and you feel that you are ready for life you can you can okay yes. All right. so moving on from what I, I said okay um, you, you, you said when uh, you talked about dating okay is dating is it dating with the intention is it dating with the intention to get married or yes. dating dating for dating, fun not for fun not for fun i mean so which other let, intention let me, let me, let, no, let, let would me, you would, Reverend Victor, which I, other purpose let me, let me, would you I, have for dating can aside I, marriage can i land yes please let, land. Let, me, let me land and then you can comment okay all right so you know that we are, okay so they are youth, yeah. Okay, all right. And when you are young, you have all sorts of emotions and things, you know, you know, pricking you and whatever. Okay, so you might have friends of the opposite sex who you actually like and you are fond of. Okay, okay. And then you have friends. You start off as friends, but then it, it gets to be more than friends okay so you are so, so you you tell yourself or you classify yourselves as well as well as as like oh he's my boyfriend and he, she's my girlfriend okay all right but then there is no instance of like proposing to you know to get married okay so i want to you kind of like specify because you don't go ahead and the thing is that you don't go ahead and say you meet someone and you start I want to propose to, I want to propose to you it starts from somewhere before yes, you get to that yes. that, that stage yes. so I want you to kind of All right, like you know, you know I'm, I'm assuming we've, we've gone beyond that stage of knowing the different levels of relationship so we are just talking about dating then we talk about like just prior to dating and then you date and then we talk and we, we, we make progress but there are different levels of relationships right and there <laughs> they have they have names there's one called is acquaintance and situational relationship okay when when you find yourself in a class let's say uh, in the university you are in a class yes but you just relate to the person. Oh, hello, hi, you are course mates and all that. That one is, is an, it's just an open friendship, right? But beyond the open friendship, you could have like a circle of friends that you are really praying about. You are trying to get closer to them. You are trying to get to know them. You can't visit everybody. You can take a number of friends that you really visit trying to get close, but yet still, you do not create any um, impression on their minds. Is that how it really happens? Can I, okay, can so I, can I think it will be good. It will be good if we just narrate our versions, yes, and then you can all learn learn from them. I think. I think that. Uh, yeah. I think that yeah, the the current situation versus uh, uh, foreign affairs are different. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let me just are, let me just tell you uh, uh, one just, typical just, just, thing. Sorry, I'm coming because now, unfortunately, I mean, we we happen to find ourselves in the church, and the ideal way is what you're saying. Yes, but unfortunately, that's not the reality on ground. So what's the right reality now, on right ground? now? Let me right now. We have things called um situationship is complicated um 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 
Yeah, I yeah, I, my, I remember with, my my niece going on about all these different kinds of see, things. Yeah, friends with benefit. I mean, uh, to be honest, situationship. <laughs> Br- Bridget will give you a Okay, so the situation situationship is like sometimes um, you go for a camp meeting. You know, you are there for just one week. After the meeting, you are not going to meet each other again. But then you you choose to fall in love and start doing things there, yes. And then <laughs> you do that, you do that, do. <laughs> no, because the thing is that the thing and is then, that, or you travel. I mean, also work related. Oh. It can be any. It can yeah, be workshops, yeah. office workshops, and all that. Like maybe two weeks in a hotel, and you are just there. Yeah, you, you are for a workshop. You are going for a workshop, and then people are coming from maybe now a uh, West Africa, all over Africa. You meet, and then somewhere, somewhere, people fall in love, and then things happen. Infatuation. Yes, so that's that is what why it is called situationship, and then there is also and then there is also another time where you really know that this person I'm not going to marry this person, but you just enjoy maybe let me just use the word having sex with a person, you just enjoy. <laughs> You just enjoy the person's company. So for the meantime, for the time being, like as as long as it will take, you enjoy me being with the person. So like it's just a situation that you are, you find yourself in. So it's a situationship. It's not just friendship. It's not just conversations. Sex is also part. So then it becomes a situationship. Yeah. And you see, <laughs> you see, friends with benefits. That one is. You have a friend, like maybe Sammy and Bridget, they are friends, but they know, <laughs> they don't have, they just have, um, their mutual feeling is just friends, uh, friends that will go out of their way to do things for them, but there's no love in there, however, they have benefits, they have sex, they do the um, first base, second base kind of things. Oh, but <laughs> first base, first base, second base. I don't understand. The first base, second base. I say, I say, we're not say. Oh no, 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 tell us. Like, so um, okay. Yeah, 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 Second base is kind of almost, you're almost there. But third base, they will do. You've reached a different level. Yes, so that one. And I feel like, you know, when, uh, like, what we remember, when we were talking, and you were saying that when you get to a certain, when Auntie Angie was saying, um, you, you're of age, and then you find somebody. But when we was against that one, and this is the same situation that sometimes you grow up to a certain age and then your parents are like, hey, it won't worry. Hey, won't you marry? Won't you marry? But meanwhile, when we were younger and we had people that we didn't have any intentions of doing anything with them, you are chasing the people away. Now, the person is old and then there's nobody and then it's like, won't you marry? It's like when <coughs> there's a story of some, a man who had three daughters and then boys kept on coming to the house. Then he put beware of dogs there. And there were a lot of dogs in the house, beware of dogs. Now one day he wanted the girls to marry. He put ice can and ice block is sold here. <laughs> so that people will come to the house and see the, the women. So I feel like sometimes we have to I'm not saying that we should you should allow us to go and spoil the or go and manage the place, but <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Um I know that I'm not can I just say that? So, obviously, because we are Christians, we, we are fully aware that there are certain, some of the ships that you, you mentioned are not, don't fall within the, the Christian domain. I don't think they are things that are worth considering because, obviously, we won't enter into a situation ship or, or, or whatever. It's, uh-huh. it's something that is facing them. 
Yes. Do you understand it? Mm. They are yes. faced with it. Yes. And so they are faced with it, and the peer pressure yes. gets to them. So it's how do you prevent yourself from getting into your situationships? Yes. That's, that's what we need to look at. Yes. That you go on a trip and you meet somebody and get together with a person, one off, and then you get up and go. Um, I think... Hello, uh uh-huh. I think that also the thing about the I think the thing about the age is also something that we have to discuss because it is eleven, twelve year olds who have boyfriends now. Yeah. It's not like sorry. It's not eighteen where you are going to start even thinking about boys or girls. It's it's much, 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 much younger. And there is much, 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 much more exposure to pornography, to all kinds of things. So if maybe you even spoke to some of the people in maybe younger than us and you ask them what they know and what they have been exposed to, you'd be quite surprised at what they know. So also dating, because when um, Pastor Peter was saying dating, I was like, ah, what kind of dating is he? That was the first question that came to my mind. What kind of dating is he referring to? Because when I was younger, dating was not for marriage. In secondary school, it was not for marriage. Like, oh, okay, this person likes me. I like the person. So we are just this thing. But it's like, you are not thinking that I'm going to marry this person. And that was what was the thing. So it's, I think we have to kind of clar- clarify for ourselves what it is we are, ref- we are referring to. Otherwise, it, w- it could get a bit confusing. Okay, so allow, because we allow me one minute. You see, um, no offense to anybody sitting here, okay? Um, don't take it personal. But the thing is that some of some people sitting here were overly creepy, very creepy, and they start from they just meet somebody. I, I want to propose, you know, to you, okay? But in everyday circumstances, I mean, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. People date. I like you. You like me. And then we just start. We start rolling to. We start rolling together. It can be without any bad intentions. When we were in secondary school, I used to go to, uh, let's say uni, I, I used to go to AGCM. And then we, we knew people like, we knew people, oh, this person and this person, they are going out, they are dating, okay? People were dating. Many of those people didn't, didn't end up getting married, but they liked, each, they liked each other, so they had some sort of a relationship, okay? So that's what I know as dating. Some of these relationships blossomed into marriage and some didn't. Okay, all right. There's a comment on FCC before. um, Okay, so it's six minutes past seven. I'm sure we can be on this introduction for the rest of, of the time. And so I think let's probably bring ourselves um, back into the room. Um, Okay, so a few comments. Um, So first of all, I can see there is some generational gap (laughs) issues over here. Um, I'm used to the word relationships. Others are used to the word dating. Others are used to other words, courtship, etc., going out. So I think we need to probably establish some definitions over here. So we are looking at, um, and then secondly, um, we are all children of God. So we are in this world, but we are not of the world. Okay, um, fornication is a sin, and so um, we are not here to discuss a relationship in which you, like as a child of God, am permitted to fornicate. 
that's not why we are here. We are here as children of God. And the word of God is what is going to guide our discussion. Um, we are not going to discuss how to be in a situationship, base two, base three, and still be um, and still be a child of God. Okay. Um, so, I think different. I think we all have certain different uh, definitions in our minds. Um, I don't know how we can keep it the communication going so that we know that we are dealing with pre-marriage and then maybe marriage kind of because I think once we start using the terms I mean some confusion comes into the room um, but I really would like us to make progress else we will just be trying to close the generation gap So there was a comment on FCC by Aku. Um, she said, situationship are real. It doesn't always have to be about sexual relations per se, but being in an abusive relationship and being in a relationship with people who are seeing other people or married. Okay, and then Pastor Ruby also asked a question, what should a Christian date be like? How should a Christian sister and brother who want to explore the possibility of a relationship date? So that's, those are the comments on FCC. Um, okay, so um, sorry again, I'm looking at the time and I want us to make the most out of it. Um, it's not that I want to rush the whole thing. Um, so before this session, a couple of questions were sent to us. I'm sure they came from the youth and um, I think we will try and go through them. As we go through them, discussing them, um, discussions may come up and then we will. Um, and so the way we categorize it is there is a certain point called marriage. There is um, pre-marriage that will comprise of um, I'm not yet ready to marry. I have plans of getting married. Um, I meet someone I think this is the person I want to get married to and then I get married and then the marriage okay um, and so what we've tried to do is to collate the questions in, in, in that kind of order um, so if you permit me I'll just go straight to the first question and the first question is has God really prepared one person in the entire world for me how to know and then another question how to know the right person for marriage any ideas our base is from the word of God from the Bible Person. Personally, I don't think so, because I feel like if that's the case, uh, Muslim brothers as Muslim brothers that marry um, the Muslims who marry four wives, five wives. If they marry five, that means the other the person whose wife is part of the person who has married the five, the person won't get somebody to marry. So I think uh, I don't think it's one person for one person. I don't know if. No, one person to one person, but God has prepared just one person. Like maybe God has prepared just Sammy for Bridget. <laughs> yeah, but um, what what you are using to buttress your your answer? Do you think the Muslims have any interest in um, yielding to your God's concern or desire? 
Let me forget about the Muslims. They, they have, but is it, is it what their church permitted? Or, or, or what the doctrine of Christ or of God permitted? Okay. It's, it, well, it's not, it's not, it's not what uh, the Bible permits. But if that's the case, then it means it's unfair to other um, the people who haven't done anything because I mean the world is not a fair place. The world is not a fair place anyway. But if that's the case, that means somebody who has married there has married somebody's wife, and I don't think that's fair. And I don't think God would do that. Um, yeah, but the fact that people choose, people have free will and they choose what they want to do, does that negate God's intent for creation? No, I'm just asking you, pay the defense that you are using to answer your question. Is it, you are making an analysis and I'm, I'm trying to open it up for you. Um, I think God has a preference as to who he would want each of us to marry. But I think we also have free will. So we can decide that maybe the person that God has for me is not who I want. Or maybe I just say that, oh, maybe I, I don't even get to know him that well to even know who he would have for me. But I do think that with every part of our lives, God has what he would have us do. So I do think that there could be one person that God would say, oh, if... Um, which is for this person <laughs> it will be good but I, I, I don't think he, he's left us to just decide without him having a I don't know a, a preference or a say oh, no, I mean that one I don't know I, I'm just saying that I think he has a preference for us as for everything else that he has for our lives okay so with that question I think it came from the perspective of okay there is one person for me and that is the only person and for me I think no because fine God is one man to one woman but then even when you look at before Adam got Eve God presented all the animals he presented, presented all his options okay do you like this do you like that do you like that and Adam said no I, 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 can't, I cannot deal with any of these people and then he finally brought Eve. And then he said, okay, yeah, now this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. So God has... So, many so why, did, why didn't God bring Eve's? <laughs> okay, fine. God didn't bring Eve's. But then I also believe that God has lots of men and women. I mean, we are all here. So we are seeing each other. And then he knows all of us. And so if, for instance, he brings Sami to me, present Sami in a nice way. Ah, I, I've, I'm seeing Sami, I'm seeing Niamo, I'm seeing all of them, but then although God knows us and he knows, I mean the purpose for our lives and all that and he knows who will be able to, um, I mean be, support you in fulfilling his purpose, but it doesn't mean that's the only person, like the sole person who has uh, I mean, I don't know if you get it Hmm. All right. So, hello. Yeah. It looks like mine is a question. I'm just wondering if it means that when a man marries two or three wives, is it the same? And why is it a sin? Yeah, well, perhaps so, let, let's take, let's take it as I've married one, two, three. <laughs> I've married one, two, three, and I have I have my own money. I'm taking care of everyone. Everyone needs. No one lack anything. No one lack anything. The children that lack anything. They are all happy. We are all happy in the house. Doesn't mean it's a sin. Okay. Um, we were dealing with something before you asked. Let me, let me quickly come in. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When God is at work in you and influencing your way of thinking, your mind, your decisions will end up proving that indeed this is either the good will of God 
or the acceptable will of God, will of God, or the perfect will of God. Right? And I believe that God hasn't lost control over creation. He created you and I. He created just as He created Eve for Adam. In the same way, He created each and every one of us with purposes. And in his original plan, there is a will and there is a purpose. There is who you should be married to as his perfect will of God. And there are others too that you could be married to as his permissible or acceptable will of God. There are also others you could be married to as he would say this is also good. Right? And is not really going to lead to a distraction in your life. I told you the objective, the, the ultimate goal from the beginning, that whoever you settle with, at the end of the day, you must be able to account to God that I have fulfilled my calling. I have fulfilled my purpose. And you must be able to finish your race and your fight. And this is not an institution that you are carrying to the world beyond. Right, But for you to be able to fulfill what you have to do on this earth, there is someone that he has prepared and ordained for you. If per your hardiness or per his hardiness, right, God wouldn't manipulate any individual's will. And marriage is going to be between two people, two individuals. Right? And anyone could choose a path. But if you are doing this prayerfully and giving room to God, I believe that he would be at work in both of you, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure or his good purpose. You know, but we should be able to trust God. We should be able to trust God. And for you to have God act on your behalf whilst you are trusting him, it means that you would have to live a life that would permit him to do that. That would cause him to be justified in acting on your behalf. Right? And from the beginning as we were discussing, we realized that we could have our own minds. Your own mind of being in a situational relationship to get some benefits, to go to a hotel for a conference and you just spend some two weeks having fun and doing a whole lot and a whole lot and indeed, this is the time that you ought to rather be connecting with God, getting to know his will, his mind, his purposes, and investing in yourself, investing in prayer. Jesus spent hours upon hours praying before he chose his disciples. And even that he found a Judas. God himself formed Eve and brought to Adam. And even that there was conflict in their marriage. There is no guarantee that this is the perfect will of God for me. So marriage and life will be so smooth. Automatically. There would have to be a searching. And connecting with God. And doing the right things to, to, in order to find yourself there. And... Okay, you are, should you marry two, or you should marry three, or you should marry four, five? <laughs> I think by now we should know that we are instructed. And let let each man have his own wife. Let each man have his own wife over and over and over. I don't know where else in the New Testament we had any individual carrying along with three or four wives. Okay. Um, I want to read the scripture. It says, Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make 
straight your paths. Um, some version says, and, um, and he will direct your path. Okay. Um, a lot of times, um, let's say if you had two job opportunities, you will go before God and you go and ask God uh, which one you should choose. You probably will go and see Pastor Martin and say which one you should choose. But a lot of times when it comes to marriage and relationships, we think that, well, um, God has given me the free will. Um, I would always like us to go back to the Bible. Um, Second Corinthians 6 um, says, um, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Okay. Um, so, bottom line is, as a child of God, you cannot marry an unbeliever. Um, a child of God must marry a child of God. But like Pastor Victor said, you can take it a step further and ask God to lead you to marry the right person. I always look at the example of um, Isaac and Rebecca. Okay. If you see the way God directed the path of the servant of Abraham, you can see that it was everything was leading directly to Rebecca. And if that was Old Testament, I believe that if we pray to God sincerely and tell God to direct us who we should marry, God can lead us to that person. And let's always remember that there are some Christians who are fox in sheep clothing, both men and women. And so don't just take it for granted that the person comes to church, the person sings, the person is prayerful and all that. The person can be sheep in you know wolf's clothing. So Pray to God and let God lead you. Okay. You have an example. A friend of mine uh, met a guy. And um, I remember the guy followed him to church and everything. But you know, it's like just in the beginning of the relationship, she started complaining that she's not seeing him too well. And I remember telling her that don't even waste your time. You know what you should do. Just go to God. Pray to God and tell him that whatever I need to see at the beginning of this relationship, whatever that this guy is hiding, whatever I need to see, God, let me see it. But remember that praying this prayer, they had it. she's not done anything with the guy. So, yeah, pure. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. So, she said, okay. So, after she had prayed... Oh, it just got worse. So she just saw the guy for who he was. And she realized that he didn't have any good intentions. So she just told him, you know what? We haven't even started. We haven't even gotten anywhere. Let's just end it. So I believe that when you are dating, if you meet somebody, go to God. Tell God, let me see this person for who he is. And you believe it. God will show it to you. Things will, things will just will reveal itself to you that I'm so sure of you, you can't go wrong with that prayer I was also to, to share so a couple of years ago there was a lady that I used to just pray with she was supporting me in prayer so I think she put up my picture and then um, somebody told her Nama, like I want to give me, give, like, give me her number I was like oh so she asked me I was like hmm and so I'm not sure, but I said, okay, she just give the person my number. But she was like, that night, when she slept, she had a dream. And in the dream, she was giving me, like, uh, a present. And the present, it was a sneak. So she woke up like, ah, now mother, I've been praying, why would I give her that thing? The Holy Spirit told her that, who are you going to introduce her to? She was like, ah, she was like, yeah, the guy is not a correct guy, so don't even like open the door. So what Auntie she is saying is very, very true. When you actually are praying and you ask, God God actually will will, will reveal it to you. Okay. Um, 
we have just about 30 minutes to go so I'll move on to the next significant question um, what to look out for before agreeing to marry how to choose the right partner sorry come again okay what do you look out for before agreeing to marry someone in other words how what are the things you look out for if you want to marry the right person I think from one of the scriptures that we read, you have to be equally yoked with the person. Because you said that can two work together, I said they agree. So I think most of Pardon? I said remember. I said that from the scriptures that that, are, that was read, from the scripture that was read, it said can two work together except they agree. So you have to be equally yoked with the person. I mean you have to both know the Lord and yeah. That's one of the specs. Or the most important spec. Um, I think when Pastor Victor was speaking, he mentioned um, someone selling Indomie. I think when you were speaking, yes. And so I think somebody who has a livelihood, who is working, or who is looking to work because you might meet somebody oh sorry you might meet somebody who pardon is lazy and you know like um has no plans at all of um getting a job so i think you should look at somebody who is working or is actively looking for work um, hello okay i just want to say something with regards to what nanama said um, when I started going out, I wasn't working, no. No, but potential. We saw the potential. I wasn't working. There was potential. I was in, I was in school. Yeah. You're, a pota- you're a serious guy. Yeah. So that's what I want to hear. Yeah. All right. Potential. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay, so... All those things right? Would you look out for somebody who is kind? Would you, someone who has empathy? And your crock and your crock wrong crown because you would meet someone that I have so many examples. You can be in your room crying. Your children will come out and even ask you, why are you crying? And the person is in the room with you and will just walk out. Yeah. <laughs> so, there are people like that. Yeah, so you, first of all, you need to know yourself and what you can take and what you can't take. Some women don't care. Like, yeah, she should be crying, the person can walk out. But that's... But, Others to you, if you know you're a sensitive person, you need to pay attention to these things. And compatibility. How compatible are you with a person? Okay, on that chair. How do you know? You would have been talking to the person. You would have been sharing what your value systems are, your beliefs, your objectives. So you would know if you are compatible with the person or not. Your lifestyle choices. Maybe you don't like going out. The person is always out in town. Do you think that you can be with such a person? So that's the dating thing. So you are, as you are dating, as you are getting to know, maybe you go out yeah. with a, whether maybe you go out with the person, you go out to papaya, 
and as you are sitting there, the person is munching on his bones. You know, can you can you take that? Yes. Or you can't take that. No, sometimes. Uh-huh. So that's the dating thing. As you are dating, you are getting to to know who you who who the person is. Uh huh. All right. So sometimes you also have to look, um, consider personality as well, right? And I mean, you could be with someone, and he always wants to be the one talking. Yes. And I mean, you spend the whole time with him, and he's talking, 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 and there is so much you also want to bring to bear. You don't get a chance. That's how it's going to be in the marriage. Yes. So you assess things like that. You know, and some people, when you come to them and you have a problem, that's when they are also narrating their problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like you are crying to a place where there is a funeral <laughs> to the funeral guy, and he's also narrating his. I mean, it's it's, it's not et- ethical. Yes, so and I mean the way he dresses. Are you cool? Are you okay? Or you can help him? You can. The way, I mean, yeah. vice versa. Yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That are, are you willing to be part of the grooming process? But if you know you are not willing to be a part of that process, then. <laughs> so, in a sense, are you saying that? Because I feel like every. No human being is perfect. Yes. Because, like, everybody has their butts. So, in a sense, are you saying that you have to see the things that. Maybe the person's but is something that you can deal with. It's something that you can, for lack of a better word, tolerate. Lack of a better word. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. For instance, I, I remember when I was in school. I mean, I would always pray. When I'm trying to get close to you, I would pray about you, especially when I'm thinking in, in a certain direction of all right, all right, relationship. All right. I, would, I would pray. All right. I would pray and I would ask God specific things. Yes. Fire, bro. So there, so there was a friend that I mean, didn't allow me to get to know her very well, but she's also comfortable around me and happy. And but when, like, you get to know people by interaction, you ask questions and responses, and how you are able to to jail and you, you need to process information about the person and I realized she wasn't giving me any information to process All right so I just prayed that God I want to know this person very well beyond I, there seemed to be a veil you ask a question it's like ah I don't know <laughs> so I prayed and when I, and when I prayed one night before I slept and I had a dream about her and it was a very, very good dream, a very nice dream. And like as a student, she's taking me to some hostels that she's built with, I mean, like some five story or so, telling me, showing me the rooms. And I woke up and said, Wow, I mean, she's a student and this is a builder, this is someone who can do so much. But by evening of that same day, she had also showed me the extreme side of her character in real life in real life I mean so I went to God with it I said I asked you to show me and I'm seeing these two extremes so what should I do with it yes and so the Lord told me that I'm revealing these two extremes so that you would decide whether you could really handle this live with this or not Right, and I said, no, this one, I can't handle this one. Yeah. What I've seen in real life, I mean, yes. So, God God speaks, and when you are really careful to know, you you know. So, you can't have 100%. They are both good, bad, and whatever, weaknesses and strengths. But you need to know whether you can handle these weaknesses. Yeah, this I want to share something that I think for me it's it's very valuable, very essential. Um, the fruit of the spirit, we we know them: love, joy, peace, patience. 
there are things that uh, I'll be looking out for. They are very essential because as Christians, we're all supposed to be maturing to that stage. Yeah, but I also acknowledge the fact that we are not perfect yet. No one is perfect. We are all pressing on. We are all trying to get there. So for me, one of the things that is very valuable to me is teachability. The ability to um, accept um, correction. Please, I'll, I'll quote a few verses. Uh, please, the Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. This NLT, NLT version. To learn, you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate correction. Uh, so if you see that this person, like if they are going astray or something, you are trying to correct them and they are being hesitant and all that, you see that it's a red flag. Yeah. So for me, that's one of the red flags. Um, Proverbs chapter 9 verse 8. It says that, so don't bother correcting mockers. They will only hate you, but correct the wise and they will love you. Alright, so if you see that this person, like we are all trying to mature, I mean, she can correct you, you can correct her. But if you correct her, she's trying to be defensive about it and she's still stuck to her ways and all that. Yeah, then you see that it's a red flag. Um, please, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. Recently, I've been trying to learn a lot of Proverbs, especially on these things. It said that people who accept discipline are on the pathway to life, but those who ignore correction will go astray. So is this person someone who you can point out that, oh, you did this and it was wrong, and I think that it should be done this way, and the person will reason with you, probably explain why they did it that way, and you guys will reason it out, and the person, if the person is wrong, they accept that they are wrong, and make efforts to change. Yeah, so there are a whole lot of things that, and for me, the major thing is teachability, because um, we, we, God should be, be able to teach all of us, so that we grow up in him. This last one, Proverbs 10 verse 19, to support what Pastor Victor was saying, he said that too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Yeah, so maybe if the person is someone who, like let's say you want to share your problem with and now the person is sharing their problems with you, and you want to talk and the person is always talking and not giving you room, all these things. So basically, the, the whole thing is that I've, I believe we need a lot of wisdom to be able to see some of these things. And Proverbs 22 verse 3, this is the last one. This is the last, last one. Last one. It says that a prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions, but a simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. So as you are dating the person and you are seeing all these things, the wise people will see that I can't cope with these things. These things are not right. And then they'll turn around. But I say that the simple thing, the foolish people will keep on going and then suffer for it in future. And so there are a lot of things that we must learn um, to develop the wisdom to make right decisions as we pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us too. Amen. Amen. Um, Last it's finished. It is okay. over. Um, the last time. <laughs> for, for me, this is what I would say. Um, before you go out looking for the right person, ask God to prepare you to be the right person. Okay. Um, and then there is, I, I read this many years ago. I can't remember where I got it from, but the person had two rules. And the two rules were, um, so let's say I'm a guy. If so, the questions, the question I should ask myself is, if I were a lady, would I like to be that person? Okay, and then um, would I like that person to be the mother of my children? If you're able to answer yes to these two, most likely you are making the right choice okay so if you're a lady ask yourself if I were a guy would I like to be this guy 
would I like that guy to be the father of my children? Okay. All right. Um, Angie, you wanted to say something quickly and then... Yeah, so what I wanted to say, I, I didn't hear anyone say physical, anything, physical appearance. Uh-huh. I, and I could hear that you saying that just now. I mean, is it um, something that is paramount? Is it paramount? Is it, pa- is it paramount or physical appearance? Is it paramount? To, even to add to that, I think sometimes when uh, a guy... A guy comes to you and you're like, um, the guy tells you they like you, but maybe, well, let me just use your spec, not necessarily specs, but maybe you you prefer a tall person, but this person is short, or you prefer <laughs> somebody, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, yeah. I'm just giving examples, or maybe you prefer, but I think, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> Or you prefer somebody who, who has body, like I think, but maybe Niamu is presenting. Body? I'm just saying, oh. somebody you want somebody who has a, hair, a hard chest, like yeah. Niamu, yeah. but the one coming doesn't have a hard chest, that's a soft chest, like I think. <laughs> if, if, if you went. <laughs> Sometimes people say these things, and they are like, "What's your home? You are being some way." Is it is it uh, is it wrong to have a physical preference? Or uh, okay, let me let me just give this experience. It is not so wrong, like overly wrong, but it can also get in the way of something. I realized that. Um, a guy approached me, like on a normal. I don't like him. Nah, I, <laughs> I just don't like him. But then I sat a few times with the person. I realized that, no, this is it. I mean, like, there is love. There is empathy. Like, this person is caring. And those are the things. Like, when, so it makes you forget that this person is actually not or, or tall or m- muscular and all that. And you realize that, yeah, oh, I was, oh, no, this one there, I'm wrong. Let me reconsider. So, <laughs> so yeah, as you get to the you realize that you are actually becoming physically attracted to the person, even more than you imagined. I have experienced that, and I think this one, I would say. <laughs> Yes. So um, when we when we say that God God is at work in us to will and to do according to His good pleasure, is is also uh, applicable in this area of our lives. Okay, such like that you you are a tool in His hands. You've prayed and asked Him for specs, and He's brought a number of people your way. And you are asking further, asking further. There is a point where your will must be dropped and say that nevertheless, not by my will, but by your will. Because there, there may be an ingredient in you which may be directing you towards a particular direction. But that also may be the pathway to your destruction. And that tall brother may use his height to head you. <laughs> and that short brother may be so loving, yeah. caring, and accommodating. We who are and short. would never we lay short. a hand on you I'm throughout your entire marital life. Yeah. You're right. But you may miss out on that. But, and again, you can grow in love. Exactly. You can yes. grow in love. What we define as love. Yeah. Most of the time is not love. It's true. That barbarismic feeling yeah. where your heart misses a bit when he passes by because of his perfume, the smell of his perfume or his stature or how he's shaved and he's groomed and how he's very well kept and he's dressed and all that. They are all things that could pass. They are not real things, right? But when you are really 
in, in tune and in touch, you will realize that he may not appear so gloomy, but at the end of the day, God will also prepare him for you. I'm not saying that just go out and then ignore anything that you like and consider that what you don't really like is the will of God. That is not what I'm saying, but I'm, I'm saying that don't put these things as the primary things that you are looking out for. Okay. Um, our next questions. I'll give an example. So, not, not a person, but a friend. Um, so, we all used to, th- th- she's much younger. So, we all used to, like, they, she and her friends pray a lot, Pao. And I remember she said um, she's met a guy, but the guy is so short and she's tall. And I'm like, so why don't you like him? She said, I can't take the height. She's like, I mean, at the point her car was spoiled, this guy gave up his car to her and was taking public transport. That's so cute. So I looked at her, I'm like, what Aww. else do you want? She said, her, her mother was even like, what, what, what this boy? She said, Mama, Mama, man, come on, I'm coming. But my person met because his height. But in the, so she never, she didn't end up with the person. In the end, she ended up just having a baby with somebody. So you, you miss opportunities if you don't look beyond these, exactly. yes, the physical. And yes. All right, just a quick, a quick thing. A lot of the times, um, the analysis you make in your in your mind, the calculation, the ladies, you say, how would my children look like? Would my children be so short like this guy? Even me, look at my height, and then the guy is shorter. So my children would be far shorter. It's like, we are growing downwards. <laughs> right? And, and what would my friends say, and this and that? Now, when you give yourself 10 years, most of your friends who you may think will be laughing at you, and maybe looking at other things. Their relationships, I mean, a lot of them would be... Yeah. I don't want to even talk about it. It's apart from those who remain resolute and focused, right? And I also know some who have married not so height and doubt, and their children are far taller than both parents. Miracles far taller than I mean. I could say you you can have this this guy this graphic uh, Sami. Yes. So these things are. I mean, you really have to trust, and if you are a tool in God's hand, He will bring you to a good end. Please don't quote the scripture again, but I want to make a point. That major on the majors and minor on the minors. There are things that are major things we should be looking out for, and others that are minors. If you go and focus on the minors, you, you might realize that in your relationship, the major thing that you ignored are the ones that are hurting you the most. So you should look out for the major things, character and all those things. And the minor things, well, they are part of the mix, but they shouldn't be the topmost priority. Because scripture say that charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll take the next set of questions. Um, how far is too far in a relationship and how to abstain from pre-marital sex? That one. Hmm. How well, far you. is too far, and how do you abstain? How far is too far? How far is far? How far is too far? <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll just I'll just give. <laughs> So, someone to some to, to some people, one of my friends. I mean, yes, I could don't don't be mad. My best friend in Kumasi. <laughs> so she tells me, um, she said, Bridget, for me, I, I kiss my husband to be, and it's okay for me. I'm able to manage it, and so for her, she's able to manage it, and 
she's okay. She she doesn't go beyond, and it's not a one hour kiss. I mean, hello, good goodbye kind of kiss. I, I'm assuming no on the lips actually. <laughs> so she's able to manage it, and then they've been at it for let's say a year and a few months, and they are getting married, and others still cannot. So me, I'll say, don't do, don't try anything. And I think that's why Pastor K, uh, Pastor um, <laughs> Pastor Victor, Reverend Victor was asking, dating for five years, what are you going to do? You will be, you will be tempted. And so um, when you meet, you pray about it, and then if you feel that okay, this is it, you do out and then get married and have the permission to do the do. Please, there's a question for us on FCC. There's a scripture on this one. So, talking about you setting up physical boundaries. And the scripture is songs of, Song of Songs, 8 verse 4. Promise me, O woman of Jerusalem, not to awaken love until the time is right. <laughs> there's a question for Rafik. Oh. It's, uh, PM is asking that Rafik, have you, the things you said have you put them into action and did it work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good things Good things take time You understand? So we are working on it yeah. Very soon we shall show results Amen Hey PM Me <laughs> PM Please, please, uh, one scripture, one scripture. It's two verses, so. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27 and 28. It says, Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? And so don't try to do like you can do it. Like, yeah, just run away. All this, I mean, when... Like with sexual sin specifically, it says flee. There's a reason for it. Like if you stand there and say that you are going to, like your chest is hard, you can't endure this. You will see now then you are inside. Yeah, so wisdom says flee, flee. Don't try to find ways around it. Amen. Listen, I can tell you tried and it worked. You tried and it worked there. I tried and it worked there. From, yes, from experience, yes, yes. Okay, um, yeah. so Sister Setuchi talked about uh, boundaries, but exactly what are some of these boundaries? Um, so, um, I think, first of all, um, don't put yourself in a situation where you love the other person more than God. Okay. Don't love the other person more than God. Put God first and come what may put the other person second. Okay. And that has to be in your spirit, in your mind, in your thought, everything. I mean, once the boundaries in your in your spirit and in your mind are broken, and then then your body will just follow. All right. Um, then there are some other things that you need to set for yourself. Um, for example, if you drive a car as much as possible, um, maybe. Okay, let me uh, let me pick it. I'll, I'll say it. Let me let me let me pick it up um, like this. First of all, don't be in as much as possible. Don't be in an enclosed place together. Okay. Um, set boundaries on what times you can visit. Okay. Um, don't stay too late in in a. Don't stay too late in a lady's place or in a guy's place. It's 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 not healthy. Um, and then, and then if if you drive, for example, let's say you work with the person and you have to give lift or something, let somebody else be in the car. All right. If you can, let somebody be in the car. Don't. 
try to say that oh like we'll, we'll be having some conversations that we don't want third parties to to hear okay i mean being in the car alone you roll, roll up your glasses and it can lead to problems so set boundaries set boundaries for yourself sorry you you have to make it feasible for yourself if you love god yeah i can't know maybe that's when we have some topics to talk about i'm just asking because maybe we we go to work morning to evening five and the only time saturday i have rehearsal i have sunday i have church after church i have other activities i have to run back on it's only after work and it's not like we are going home but on the way you drop me at home on the way that's the only time we can get time to church if we don't get time to church how are we able to know ourselves roll, roll down your glasses <laughs> okay, we'll roll down, we'll roll down, yes. i mean you have to be deliberate about it um yeah all right uh, so in a summary what he's saying is that you need to be conscious intentional about it and you need to pay a price for it pay a price for it once sex comes into the picture it clouds your judgment so you be with a person and you see all the red flags but because you've given yourself you're not able to make sound decisions and sometimes you just keep making excuses and sometimes we lead you into marriage and then when the problem starts people will ask you did you not see the signs but because it's because you've already given yourself so you is like you were already married before you go married so it clouds your judgment it's not worth it entanglement entangled like entanglement yeah entanglement yeah did yeah. yeah. and yeah i heard something they say Chris, christian girls get pregnant easily more than anybody else <laughs> It's, it's true man no no but like no i understand the statement like the bad girls will go and do all the things and nothing will happen but the christian girl will go and try to one time you let down them. your guard yeah you're not disciplined and then yes exactly so you you realize that the bad girls you don't see them getting pregnant exactly like you like how about this girl she's changing changing she doesn't know it okay um we have just a, a minute to go um let's extend we should extend it but then the other the other thing is this sandwich the other thing is this one to the pre-marital not doing that no you realize that questions online let's take the questions meet, online if you take sex out of the equation and there's a heartbreak you are not as, as affected yeah. as when there's entanglement sex if you avoid sex in the relationship and there's a heartbreak you don't sink, sink deep into the hole like absolutely true yeah so the, the Nana <laughs> 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 and the, <laughs> hello the the reason is that i mean when you allow sex you've actually given out everything that you can offer you've given out your body and having given your body if this person is not marrying you you will be so you will feel so worthless and you will feel a part of you has been stolen away because you have you have because you have you have made yourself one with that individual and he's not marrying you he's not marrying you so within your soul you will now be torn into pieces or torn apart if i should say yes just wanted to add something 
Um, there's there's a book by I don't know if you guys have heard of Juanita Bynum. Yeah. She has a book called No More Sheets: The Truth About Sex. It's a good book. You guys should yeah. I think it's on Amazon on Kindle. And then there's this other guy on um, Instagram, Benjamin Zulu. This Kenyan. He talks a lot about premarital sex and um, relationships and everything. You can follow him. Yeah. So. Yes, and you, you have trust issues when you lay that precedence before marriage because this person who has allowed you to sleep with, now in, in his mind he thinks that, I mean, there is unfaithfulness being displayed before marriage. So what is the guarantee that within marriage you will not go out there? And what happens is that you allow the devil to become a referee in your marriage. Because whatever you, you did in, in fornication was not to glorify God. And it was just allowing the flesh to fully manifest. So you, you bring in, you invite the devil. And the way you couldn't control yourself and you give in to allow him to get you engaged in that. In the same way, his influence and his voice in the marriage grows. And he tends to manipulate. Either ways, he would manipulate in your thinking, he would manipulate in your feelings, and then he would manipulate in your actions. So, from experience, most people who allow that to happen, the marriage ends up on the rock. Okay. Um, do we've addressed all the online questions. Okay, it's eight o'clock. Do we go on? Or? How much time? Okay, let's take the last set of questions and then. Um, okay, so. The question here is, how do I break a wrong relationship? And then we'll tie that with, how do I deal with a broken heart? (laughs) How do you deal with Mr. (laughs) This one has break I shared with my congregation. People are using it against me. Um, I I think. Yeah. Um, I think I can I can answer the handling of uh, heartbreak. I think one you should acknowledge that like something is broken, because if you try and say you know I'm okay I'm fine trying to prove hard. It doesn't end up working too well for you. So just be honest with yourself that I deal with the Ashimipa. Ashimipa. No, I, th- I think it's important because sometimes we don't let God comfort us. We don't let God help us through painful things. And then you have a wound that is not healing. So I would say that one, you should say that, yeah, this thing has hurt me and um, I'm, I'm hurting. You should also not try to have a pity party. Where, you know, like, you are just depressed, you have closed your door, nobody can talk to you. I mean, you might have a low moment, but (laughs) life goes on, honestly. Like, meet meet your friends, talk to your family. Just talk about this thing, it will pass. It will pass. It will will pass. It will pass. It will pass. Hallelujah. 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 I I think um, also just talk to God about the relationship. That okay, God. So this thing maybe I thought was going to go this way or that way. I mean, just I mean because he's your father. So talk to God and say, I deal with the Ashimi mom, but Lord, like help me to get through it. Help me to be better, and also help me to find somebody sensible. So, <laughs> do you understand? I I think key word here is sensible. And I, hey, Jesus. And I think <laughs> yes, I think that it's it's just also giving yourself time. Yeah, give yourself time. Don't try to say okay. 
um, I'm giving myself one week by next. Because I had a friend that did that, and then she went to quickly go and be with somebody that one didn't work well. Like you try yeah, and find a rebound, rebound person. Exactly. Okay, maybe yeah, maybe I'm okay. You go and find some silly guy somewhere. It's, it's like listen, be honest with yourself that this thing has hurt you. You have broken up, and just allow yourself to heal. If you need help, to please talk to your friend too, because I think some friends not in wait. No, don't talk to the friend that is not a Christian. Yeah, try and speak to believers that can kind of help you and give you sensible counsel. As Rafik was, listen, as we know all the verses that he brought up. It, it, hey, ah, okay, I think that's all I can say on the topic of um, of heartbreak. Oh no, no, that, there's no time to share the story, but I'll just. How did I heal? Uh, it drew me closer to God. Like I realized that, yeah, only Him. He's the only one who can heal me because, like, it was it was deep. Yeah, like, no doctor, no psychologist, no therapist, nothing. Yeah, so it, it drew me closer to God. Um, I think during those moments, it reached, it reached the point where I couldn't even memorize scripture or really read as much as I wanted to. Yeah, like, my mind was just bizarre. I, I couldn't think for nothing was working yeah so I, it, it also made me love music i mean when when the the, the scriptures the raw scriptures were not going music was doing it for me like god god centered music that helped yeah music heals yeah it was touching me so i listened to a lot of um that that people know people who know me know that i have a bluetooth speaker that's that's where the story started from. Yeah. I needed yeah, songs, yeah. So <laughs> exactly. So I bought a Bluetooth speaker, I was always listening to music. I was always yeah, like so those things. the one you will bring into church. Yeah. Which, which the Bluetooth you will bring into church. Yes, 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 yes. There was there was one there was one before that one. Yeah, that's how it started. No, the Bluetooth speaker, I'm talking about the Bluetooth. Oh no 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 no! It got spoiled, so I had to uh, yeah. And since then, like exactly, yes. that's it. Like I dodged the bullet. Yeah. So yeah. God. Y- yes. Uh, women or maybe fear men, uh, if you are not healed properly, so it's good that you go to God for a proper healing. Yes. If not. There will be fear in your heart. If you if you meet the right person gradually, because of the fear, you pass him by or you pass her by. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It can also lead to low self-esteem. Exactly. Yes. And you begin to look at yourself from head to toe and say, Ah, me cry, is there anything wrong with me? Yes. I true. mean, how, how could this lady bounce me like that? <laughs> right? So, belly. when you are asking yourself those questions, then that means there is low self-esteem coming. But, you need to you need to come out of that, and you need to. Um, it's it's usually good if a lady would tell you why she's bouncing you. It's better, it's way better. Me, I prefer I prefer that you know it, and then else your mind will wander around. If it's a if it's a lady, exactly if it's a lady, you don't want to hear. But for the guy. Ga- guys oh, we love to hear. to hear it may i love to hear it. please i'm am i talking for the guys yes yes how many love to hear it yeah i want to hear it yes no no i i would say that when when you are kind enough to express it in a very good way i would come to the place of acceptance and in short if it's something i can work on I would become a better person. The wise one. And if it's not something I can like my height, if I can't work on my height, I mean, if you bounce me based on my height, I, I, I would thank God I didn't that even marry you. Exactly. She look down on I can't you. handle. Hey. You can't handle. But I've handled it before. Me too. I've handled it before. Me and have you handled it before? And I'm saying I've handled it before. Yes. Uh, my, my height. I said, I mean, thank God you bounce me, bounce me based on something I can't change. We so both. that means you've paved the way for the right person to come. Exactly. And I'm saying that it's something a guy will be thankful for. 
than to leave him hanging. You just bounce him. It's true. It, 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 it gives him more low self-esteem than if he got to know. If it's something he could change and work on, he would come back as a better person. No, the guys are so easy. if... So, so, sometimes, sometimes too, for, like, when, when, when we know that, that's what you like. <laughs> sometimes, it, it may come out as a, like, maybe I, to soothing you and all that, I may just say, oh, it's not anything about you, but yeah. probably this and that. But the real thing, if I tell you, you'll kill yourself. You see, sometimes in your mind, yeah, like wait, to, wait, sometimes in your mind, you, you are thinking and you are saying, are you my type? <laughs> and it's mainly about, <laughs> it's mainly about ty- typology issue that you are dealing with in your mind. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes you say you say it in the nicest way. You polish it in the nicest way. For example, the person comes no try a blade. If you know, you know. Eh? Smelly mouth. And you are trying. Yes, blade is sharp. It's very sharp. And you are trying to even say it in a nice way. Maybe you suggest some things in it. Maybe we'll go to a supermarket and you say, Oh, this is like I buy some for myself and I say, Oh, you can't try this one too. So it's not, it doesn't look like some way. But then it becomes a problem. I then they will say something and you know you rethink your entire existence. So uh, it's not every guy. Maybe you accept it, but it's not everybody. No, 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 can we look at Psalm 34 verse 18 please <laughs> no, so quote it so the, I think the, the best the best the God who, God who created us is the best person who can you know pull your, back, your heart back together for you just go to him and yeah. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, very, very true. Oftentimes, you might you do that. You just you plunge you plunge in by yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, time is up. Um, there are. Talk about the abuse. Maybe somebody. Yeah. So there, there are there are a lot more questions. Um, some some are not relationship related. We thought we'll have time to deal with them. Uh, we have um, sorry, you do a part two. Okay, so I'll I'll let you know. I'll let you know the the kind of issues. <laughs> you give us next request. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's it's recorded. We are coming here. Me, me. <laughs> um, so we have um, how to deal how to deal with abuse in the home, overcoming low self esteem and rejection. How to deal with unforgiveness. How can I deal with a difficult boss? how to choose the right career, how to handle financial pressure from parents and families, and how to cope when you are broke. So these touch on, I mean, a lot of other issues that um, we think we will need to make time to address them. Okay.